In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Um, we are here in Mandrut. We're still able to proclaim the word of the Lord in this area and speaking that Jesus is our Lord. We have behind us here like a history of the ancestry of those men. So um, I really wanted to use that screen one day and put, you know, the passion of the Christ. I hope I can, because this is the real history of human race. So we're speaking here, I'm the, the, thy word is truth. This is a ministry, the channel of thy word is truth. From the Bible, from the old book, from the only book who is and, and was and will be. The judging word of God was in it and the redeeming word of God from it. So we, that's why we speak. This is Pastor Susie and Sue, daughter of the Most High from rivers of living water. Today we're going to speak about the plan of what's happening around the world, but before then we're going to speak the hope of humanity. So as you can see, if you see my screen, that the Lord Jesus is, he came and he was among the whole world, either the, around him physically when people were there or later on. But what happened is here, the people was receiving the Lord Jesus in a different way. Someone celebrated him and someone hated him. So I, I pray today that you are the one who celebrates the Messiah, who is coming and coming soon. Because with all the wars that we hear around the area, especially around Israel, it's, it's very, very, very happening and soon and very soon. Well, we hear a few, a few pictures which are very good because instead of going for the war and the fire of the bombing and all that, we can go under the fire of the Holy Ghost. When the person really can be baptized in water and baptized by the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost came upon people 2,000 years ago after Jesus was ascended to heaven on the right side of the Father. And they were like electrocuted and they were talking things that they never spoke before. Languages that people recognize. That was the day of the Pentecost. Fire came upon them in a physical format even over their head. So if you really, this world wanted to have fire, instead of us listening to this one and that one want to push the button to bring the Armageddon more, I was reading yesterday, before yesterday about Putin who wanted to, he said, you know, he's pushed so hard to start the third world war. But now I'm just gonna tell him, you're a Christian man and you confess Christianity, I guess. How about you call for the fire of the Holy Ghost to come upon people? And then again, their eyes and their mind would be open so they receive the Messiah and they be saved before you push your button to ruin the world. This is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, here is the, 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 um, the light of God come upon humanity and some people cannot see except what is around them on the earthly realm. But other, they can be uh, looking with their eyes and see what is man cannot see into the unseen world, into the heavenlies in the things that God decide and make and he will make. Well, the thing is God is not really silent. He was never silent. From the beginning, he introduced himself to man and he came and said, I went to Moses and he said to him, what can I say about you? What's your name? He said, Ahe who is Ahe. It means I am who I, I am. So he is an I am. I am for you for everything you need and everything you want on that moment. So if healing is your need, then Yahweh is your need, healing, that the healer, Yahweh, come and visit you. It's a redeemer from a crisis that you're passing in, from, from a resistance that you are facing in your life. God knows what for difficulty financial. He is Yahweh. He is I am who I am. So he introduced himself to that humanity with that name. But later on, people couldn't understand him. Because they thought about him as a cloud, they thought about him as a fire, and they thought about him as the rock who gives them water, or the manna coming from heaven. But God came and took the human form, so we can uh, understand him. He come to our level to make us understand who he is, what he thinks, and what he desires of our life. So today I just want you to see with your eyes what is heavenly, and what's happening into that area, of Australia in the Middle East and the things yet to come. The Messiah is coming. If he is your Messiah and your Savior, you're in. But otherwise, there will be seven years of trouble for the world, 
not even the Pope will be able to save you. The Pope here acknowledged that it's okay to, to um, mock about, to you know, give some funny jokes about God. How about us, we do some funny jokes about the Pope, what we call him. But for me, I can't do that. The reason is the word of God is saying that you cannot really mock an anointed. So I guess he's not anointed because that's, that's he can make us give some jokes about him. Well, shame on this, shame. Well, the, 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 the Christianity within the Catholicism lost the plots. Since, you know, he gave the permission uh, a while ago. So it's not my point on the pop today, but this is very funny. You mock God, bravo, mock him. But there is an eternal fire ready for the mockers and the smokers and the people who are really feel they are too smart to, to understand why is it to take life. You be baptized by the Holy Ghost and fire. That's the fire that humanity needs these days before the termination with the terminal fire, which is called the second death. When the all the, the between Iran and between Israel and between the Arabs and the and, and Putin, they want to push the button to exterminate the existence of humankind. But brother and sister. Uh, I'm just checking that. Ah. We're still sharing our message. Share screen. I'm uh, still on recording, right? I'm recording. No? Why? You are still sharing. Oh, no, yeah, just so you are recording. Sorry for that stop. Uh, but it's better that I don't talk to myself. So here is uh, the things that we need. You know, uh, in the book of Acts, chapter 4, uh, the apostles were just calling to the Lord after he went to be in heaven and says, stretch for your hands to heal. The world as a whole need healing. The touch of the master to heal humanity, to heal our land and to heal everyone that he is sick, other spiritual sick, mental sick, emotional sick, physical sick. Stretch forth your hand to heal that signs and wonders done by the name of your holy son. Jesus is only him who has the healing in his wing. He is the son of righteousness and the healing only is in him. There is no other way. There is no other place that you can receive healing except through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, and when they prayed, the place was shaken. So today, instead of shaking the world with bombs and all those things, let us shake the world with the name of Jesus and the healing in his wing will be released upon all of us. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they speak the word of God with boldness. But today you want to speak the word of God in boldness. But everyone has to call upon the name of the Lord and he will be saved. The Lord's hand is here to move. There is judgment coming on humanity and we don't want to go for that stage yet. Before acknowledging that our Lord, our Savior is received by anyone that we, pay, we meet to tell them about the good news of salvation is only in the name of the Lord Jesus. His name through, and, and, uh, and his name through faith in his name. Only through faith in his name. His name means his authority, his power, his ability, his, his rank. That's the, that's the only thing in that name that that man, they, they were healing a man who was crippled for years and years and made this man strong, whom you see and know. And yet the faith, which is by him, has given that man perfect soundness, perfect health in the presence of you all. So today there is many people are sick into their mental, uh, either schizophrenic or drugs or whatever, into addiction or things like that, or even 
into the false face. You know, looking into the, the people of the weather, uh, crazy weather thing, they threw themselves today into the in the news of today. In the field of, of a game, you know, because and then the, the reporter was saying, you know, the, um, the global warming uh, kid. And they don't want even to come and talk about what they want. They get a little bit jealous of the pro-Palestinian and they put themselves into the middle so the camera can take them. And when they invited them to come and talk, talk about what? You're talking about global warming? Let me talk to you about the global warming from the word of God. The people will be scorched by the sun and no one will be able, sun which knows the son of God, is the sun S-U-N. And no one will be able to, to resist or to survive with that. And after that, they will not acknowledge God and they curse him more. So let me know about these three kids or three young men who threw themselves into the, into the front because the pro-Palestinian taking the same from them. Huh? What are you going to do about this, this fire? And that heat is going to scorch human alive. What is your, uh, your car on electricity and all those little things going to do for you? Global warming. And the hand of God was moved on that day. Stretch forth your hands to heal. With the, the world need healing. We're so corrupt in our thoughts and in out our preferalism, if this is an English word. You prefer that or you prefer that you're pro-Palestinian or you're anti-Semitic or you are whatever, uh, the Muslim. You give you yourself a direction and a sign. And do you think God is happy with this and that? Well, bro brother and sister, the savior of the world came and he was being rejected by most of humanity. And he's coming another time, not a joke this time. He will come to judge. He's gonna take the one who is on and there will be judgment. Don't fool yourself. He's, and in his name, through faith in his name, has made that man strong. So what is your problem today, brother and sister, here walking around? Is your, is your problem is an oppression, depression, uh, diabetes, alcoholism? What is it? Drugs? <clears throat> I had a guy who was full of tattoos, his body, young, beautiful white man, the other day, and he's tortured. He do not he put his, his head to sleep. And on his body, all demons are drawn, you know? He give his body to people to graffiti it. Every spot of that beautiful white skin. And he go to sleep in the night and he's tortured by those evil things who come upon him. And he don't know it's a problem in the right ear or the left ear on the head or whatever. Why do you do that? Well, still there is a savior who can save you. Come to Jesus and be free from all those demons and confess this as a sin. So you will have a redemption. You know that the, the fire will come and then... Uh, He's probably suffering from mental things, I guess. He opened himself to those demons, give his body to free graffiti. My preaching today is about the what's happening, the raging of the nations. Well, the raging of the nation came before, time and time again, the raging of the nation, when they come all of them against one thing in one accord. Like what's happening into the street of America and everywhere in Europe and, and here in, in, in Australia, where they're coming for a pro-Palestinian, I don't know, you do not know anything about Palestinian, and you go for them. But I'm going to give you a little bit about this because I lived into this area and I know what is happening. So don't be fooled, guys. You know, because they had an opportunity to finish the war, but no, they're hiding behind women. And sadly, you know, when they put all the, 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 the advertise about, you know, the, the street people who are screaming in the state of the European nation are women. When a friend of mine showed me that are women, why are the women? Where are the men of the Palestinian? Why are they using the Arab and the world to, to give them freedom? I'm gonna, gonna, you know, put that a little bit on hold. But we are speaking about the raising of the nations. They are raging in the street and they don't know what they want. In Israel, there was raging, they want to change of the regi regime of Netanyahu. And Netanyahu has been with this country, supporting it for many, many years. So the enemy that you know is better than the enemy that you do not know. 
but I am not really for this. But what I'm saying here, he is fulfilling the, the desire of God prophesied into the Bible about the termination of the Palestinians. It is in your book. It's not Netanyahu who's doing it. But you know, and, and they wanted to know what we're gonna do with this. And they were given a chance to terminate that war, but they prefer, no, 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 we continue. Well, I'm gonna give you that slide of uh, Abdel Nasser when he said what is taken by power should be recovered by power. That's Abdel Nasser who create all that craziness of the Islamic uh, power of the Middle East speaking Arabic and take nations and change them, change their nature. Well, we've been taken as an Egyptian nation from the Muslim by force, they took our nation and we cannot fight them back so we are submitting and silent. What I bet the Palestinian will be better under Israeli uh, authorities than being into the Islamic corruption. God gave the Muslim world money, give them the oil of the world since I was born till the day. They have all the power. This, you know, month, there was a termination of 50 years of the signature uh, of, the, of, the, of the dollar being supporting the, the petrol. And the Arabs and Saudi Arabia leading this, they're taking people into another direction. The nations who had been written about them into the word of God in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And, and people don't read, they do not understand. So the raising of the nation, there was the biggest raising of the nation which happened on the time of, the, of Jesus Christ when they say, crucify him, crucify him. And the guy, Pilate, once Pilate said, what did he do? Why? In more than one a narrative, you know, was many, more than one gospel. Why? Why did he crucify him? Why did he do? And the raging of the nation crucify him, crucify him. They crucify the savior of the whole world. The only one who came to save us. And we give him to the death by him, uh, cruelty, unexplained. Un, uh, but let me go to one of the stories which is in the Bible, in the book of Acts 19. There is many of them. Uh, then Sodom and Gomorrah, when they came all around, you know, the house of Lot, and they want to crush his house and want that man, this homosexual uh, things, even young. They said, everyone come from the old to the young. They came and want to, you know, that man who's entered there, the, the men, which are the angels. So you know, humanity were raging. When, raging. when the humanity come together and decide for something, something has to happen. And that's exactly what is happening here today, the raging of the nation. But there is one beautiful Bible verse, we're gonna read it very soon into the book of, um, the book of Psalm two. Let me find it for you. Psalm two and verse two, why the nation are are raising. Why? And the Lord laughs in heaven. Why well, it's okay to do a, a, a joke about the Lord. That's the, the, the Pope of the Christian is saying. Joke about God. Right. So let's go into the book of Psalm and chapter 2. And he's saying here, because we're going to talk about the raising of humanity outside in everywhere, in campus and everywhere. We have a bit of shame because that raising will terminate human existence. You do not understand the raising of the nations. What is God's opinion? Why do the heathen rage? And rage, a heathen here is not the uncircumcised, the people who do not belong to God, is not nations. And the people imagine vain things. This is the, the cr crazy imagination that we are. We are pro-Palestinian, we are for, uh, Islamophobic, we are anti-Semitic, and we all those crazy names. You are on one side, no matter what, but you think you are on the right side, maybe you are wrong. What is the God saying? Why the heathen are raging? Why? Why we have all this into the Western world, street and universities? Why is that? It's not enough, you know, what is happening in our field. What well, we had from a few months ago or so, the, 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 he's not a priest, he is a um, bishop, I think. Uh, Emmanuel, who was being stabbed by a kid of 15. And then now the, the police enter into their, there were six arrested this week. So there was an Islamic 
terrorism on Australia and our prime minister is for the Palestinian. So what that priest did for him is not even talk about politics. Why he was stabbed, and now the police are gonna show you the picture. They showed that six people were arrested, police enter and arrest them, and they're proving that this was an Islamic attack. Why are they doing this? They go and vandalize, you know, the, the... I just don't wanna change from one spot to another. They vandalize the, the memorial of the, the soldier of Australia. Why is that? Australia is the only nation pro-Palestine. Not like we decide that to be pro-Palestine, but our prime minister, because of his lack of wisdom, take a side which is wrong. You have to take the side of God, either you're Muslim or Jew, or the side of or, or Christian or any religion. God decided to finish with a Palestinian. What are you going to do about it? It's written in the word of God. If it hurt me, it hurt me you, you, it hurt me too. Because God loves everyone. But if you're going to continue to be on the side against God and make God your joke, huh? but please, there is a video which I put that how God was striking. It was in the news. Every mocker of him in our time. So don't think yourself too smart. When you're mocking God, you're going to get yourself into trouble. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers that counsel together against Lord and his anointed. So they are against God and his anointed with Jesus. Jesus' name is the anointed one of God. The word Messiah, it means anointed in Arabic, in Hebrew. That Christ's word is from the Greek, has nothing to do with the word, but the word anointed is the name of Jesus. He is Yeshua and Messiah. Yeshua in Mishayah, I don't know how they say it in Hebrew, but he is the Messiah. And let us break their band asunder and cast away their cords from us. This is what they say. Broke the power of God over us. And then sit in, the, and he that sit in heaven shall laugh. So you wanted to mock God, this is the message for you. Don't listen to the Pope. Because the Pope will have, you know, a reward of well, a penalty on his life, like eternal, double, triple eternal. Because he led all the Catholic faith into a disaster. You wanted to mock God to make people happy and smile? Bravo. Well, look at the Muslims who, pro who protect their religion. You know, if anyone say a word about Muhammad, they go and kill him. Shame on you. I'm going to say shame on you. Since you are not anointed by any level, then it's okay to talk about you. But I don't show any disrespect. But really, you're dragging people to a place. You wanted to be friends with everyone. That he's saying here, he said, in heaven shall laugh. You laugh of God. Well, here into the song too, he's going to laugh back to you. And the Lord shall have them in the region. Then they shall he speak unto them his wrath and vex them in a sore, in his sore displeasure. So the Lord will come and, and really give you a time and, and a penalty that you don't deserve. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. The Zion is, uh, uh, Jerusalem is the city of the great king. If you belong to the great king, by all means, you, you're welcome. But if you don't belong, this is the city of the great king. How dare you put that mosque of Aqsa over there and think you have anything to do? No. This is the city of the great king. He's saying here the word. Who sit in heaven shall laugh. Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Muslim world, Jewish people, anyone with the religion or whatever, Christian who are Catholic or whatever, listen to this. The city of God is Jerusalem, and it belongs to him. And the place where the temple was built is going to be rebuilt again because this is the prophecy of the book. There is no doubt about it. And this war is about that spot of the master that Aqsa was in there, who making all this trouble. But if you want to finish this war and be restored, you have to drop this piece of land or that mosque, which has nothing to do with Muhammad from far or from near, drop it. And then the war will finish instantly. It's not about, you know, the, the, the people who are taken into uh, hostages or whatever, it will be an instant stop of the war. 
I, I preached that once and I preached it again. Just drop the mosque, the mosque, the Aqsa mosque to the, the Jewish people because they will have to build the temple. It's not like I am for it. That temple will serve the Antichrist. He will not serve the Christ. But this is written in the prophecy. There is no other way. Let's stop in the war and make you restore. None will help you. And Iran will not help you. But you're going to bring all those people to judgment. When he say here, yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. And I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, you are my son. The Lord said, you are my son. For the people who don't want God to have a son. It's written in the Old Testament. This day have I begotten thee, begotten you. Ask me and I shall give you the heathen for inheritance and the outermost part of the earth for possession. So brother and sister, you are, who are you Muslim and Jewish fighting against? When the guy, the, the Turkey guy was preaching uh, mayor, he preached against God of Israel, he instantly fall, um, you know, dead or whatever he fall in front of his people on his speech. And the Pope wants you to mock the Lord because he wants you to fall dead instantly. Go ahead and listen to him. Right. But here is when the people are going in one spirit. There was a story in the book of Acts chapter 19. The people were rising uh, in verse 23. And the same time there uh, arose a small stir about that way. They were stirring up. People are very mad. And they said not alone at Ephesus, but among the whole world. And they were persuading. While this is a, a disturbance of the preaching of the word of God, can you please put it down? Well, they want us to preach softer, but I'm going to preach higher. That's the way, because my word has to go to many people to be saved. When the, when the people were screaming by all their lungs that Ephesus belongs to the, uh, Diana is their king, is their, their uh, what do you think I'm going to scream over this? Well, these people will be judged, and the judgment will come instant, and they will burn, and they will not know why. You don't mock God because you cannot mock him. God cannot be mocked. When the people cried in one voice, when the people cried with one voice, this is really, really when God intervened. I probably will uh, stop here. You had already a good message so far. Uh, but I'm going to show pictures for the people who are interested. Smart. Too smart. Well, in the name of Jesus, I pray that my message will reach someone. And if I'm stopped, then no, God don't want me to go in war. Uh, so, brother and sister, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, is coming. And he's not going to come soft on you. If you mock him as the, the advice of the Pope, then you're going to be uh, barbecued forever and ever. And I, I'm here to finish my message this way. But I'm calling the Messiah. The Messiah came and he's coming again. And it's up to you today what you want to decide what you're going to do with him. Either you're Jew or Palestinian, pro-Palestinian or uh, Semitic or whatever, any name. Jesus Christ came to save the world. And it's your decision. Today we've been, um, you know, insulted by that uh, evil spirit. But I'm going to let you go and you decide whatever you want. I pray that you listen to the voice of God, not the voice of the liars.
We pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen.